Welcome to this week's episode of Sailing Yacht Salty Lasts. And as you can see, there's not much sailing going on today. The weather is just truly dreadful. And um, with us doing two videos, last, last two videos on our hard lessons, we just thought, why not reminisce about our halcyon days? The happy days. Oh, there were so many happy days on Salty Lasts. So instead of trying to um, do outside work on the boat, changing lines, sorting out fenders, getting ropes and sail bags sorted out in this weather. <laughs> it's let's, too dangerous, isn't it, Bev? Let's look back to the lovely summer days, champagne sailing and things like that. And just really, really memorable moments. that the um, our last two videos were all about sort of like the hard times and the bad times and when it's weather like this yeah. <laughs> you, you can think about you know you just sort of like life can be hard I'm getting Mega excited. <laughs> the uh, surveyor is actually on our boat. Well, hopefully on our boat. Bev and I are boat owners. There's two happy days in every boat owner's life, apparently. The day you buy the boat, the day you sail it. But I don't think that's true. Well, we certainly, you know, we haven't got to the sell the boat. No. Uh, but we did enjoy buying the boat, but we have had so many good days and just good feelings. I didn't actually enjoy... About being on the boat. I didn't actually enjoy buying the boat. The no, new, that's new... just a lot of paperwork and... I spent so much money that it didn't mean anything, it was just things. No, my happy day, day one of the boat, was the day we sailed up out of Troon, heading south. and. We were on a boat. We were on our boat. Half an hour out and I'm already on the helm. I mean, say we'd, we'd sailed before because we'd sailed dinghies, very small boats, and we'd been crew on bigger boats. We chartered a boat. And we chartered a boat. Yeah. But actually, your boat. It's test sail day today. Just it being your boat there was just something really special about that feeling wasn't about totally i couldn't stop smiling <laughs> <laughs> it was oh. great and you know the, the, these things we're going to discuss um are not necessarily all, all the happy days they're the memorable days some of them weren't necessarily happy but they were certainly memorable certainly good feelings Good feelings about being on your boat. So the best thing about having your own boat is you have your own boat. <laughs> That's it. It's as simple as that. But we went out. I mean, you know. It started off brilliantly. <laughs> really good. Yeah, and by the end of the by the end of our very first day at sea on the boat, we managed to lose our dinghy, and I broke the anchor windlass. <laughs> yes, you had. So we, we bought this boat because it had an electric anchor windlass. I broke it on day one. Yeah. So there's a thousand quid's worth of equipment and it's boom, <coughs> I've wrecked it on day one. And I knew I had to fix it, but... We right had on, to get the um, anchor up first. Oh. Yeah, so I had to pull the anchor up by hand in a gale in Loch Ryan. Um, and I did that, but I then spent months staying away from that because I knew I had to take it apart and fix it. And I traced the electrics back and I found a big switch that said off, on, and above it and said trip. And I flew the trip and the thing worked, so. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? It's not all, it's not all butterflies and, and, and things like that and happiness and lights. Some, 
I'll never forget it. A particular yeah. one. So we now know where the anchor trip is and it's now properly labelled. <laughs> but there was definitely a lot of smiles and stuff. Oh yeah. One of the things that we really love to see when we're sailing is the wildlife. Um, you know, I love seeing uh, birds, especially puffins. Um, is that because they look like little penguins? Yeah, well, we have got some bias on that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, any kind of birds, but my favourite, of course, is dolphins. <laughs> I get so excited. I think technically, they're mammals. I said wildlife. These are birds, and then you went into dolphins. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Straight. <laughs> anyway, dolphins. Yeah. Um. Right. I'll talk why sheets are chocolate. Uh, dolphins. I mean. I don't know anybody who doesn't get excited by dolphins. It's one of those things that if you've got help you, you've got a small boat and you shout, Dolphins! Everybody runs over and the boat tips up. Uh, <laughs> thankfully on a boat this size, it just rolls over a wee bit, you know, so it's not a problem. But we love seeing dolphins and um, the most, the two most memorable memories that I have of dolphins, I haven't got any film of whatsoever. One, um, which was um, when my daughter was on board, uh, Gemma, uh, we saw a bottlenose dolphin. It was either a bottlenose dolphin or a bottlenose whale. It was big. It was massive. <laughs> it was absolutely huge. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen off the stern of the boat. It was just off the stern of the boat and it was massive and I have to say that made my daughter's um, trip really really memorable because it was just brilliant. More memorable for me was the time that we saw bioluminescence in the Irish Sea and the camera does not do it justice. I mean the boat going through the waves at night, all the little organisms flashing their lights in, in, in the sea and we just left this brilliant blue and green trail stretching toward the horizon and I mean I, I got a little bit of the very very bright stone camera but the, the human eye is so much better than the camera at picking this stuff up and it was magical and then on one particular night we combined the two and we have no footage of it because the cameras can't cope but we had dolphins just on the stern of the boat to be honest and they were swimming through the bioluminescence yes, you just had these big grey torpedo shaped things in the water trailing out streamers of light what they don't tell you is dolphins breath smells of fish <laughs> really really bad fish oh days and but, seals oh we've caught a few on camera um we love to see seals and um, I can't remember who it was who commented but somebody called them a wet dog and ever since then <laughs> I just look at them and think oh look we've got a wet dog on the yeah uh... it was Gemma's boyfriend Harry called oh it was Harry it was Gemma's boyfriend Harry, Harry called them a wet dog I know but we just thought that that was a when brilliant they're sitting in the water looking at you they do look like a wet dog don't they? but that's a brilliant description of how they look and it's still great to see that little wet dog and his little nose picks up over the over the water there's nothing like sunrise and sunset at sea it's not like sunrise and sunset on land because if you're far enough out, there's no obstructions. The sun just pops up over the horizon. It's just this beautiful time. You can see it coming. You can, see, if you're lucky, you'll see sun pillars where the sun's going to rise up. You know exactly where to look. You know where you're going to point the camera. It's going to come up just there because you can see it. And um, just once, it's not very good on camera, but we have got it. I actually saw the green flash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you got that. Um... <laughs> God. <laughs> you tend to live your days more than you know more by the, the the rising and setting of the sun i mean when you're at home 
on land. You stay up to one or two in the morning. It's been, you know, in the winter time it's been pitch black since four in the afternoon sort of thing. Or e even in the summertime it gets dark about mid-evening and then, you know, you turn all the lights on and you do what you're doing. When you're on a boat, you get up at sunrise and you go to bed at sunset. You know, there's no point in turning all the lights on the boat at night when you should be asleep and then sleeping through the daylight. That just doesn't work with a boat. So you tend to get up with the sun, stay awake, and then when it comes to sunset, you have the lights on for a, an hour, maybe two, then you're in bed and that's you, you get up at dawn again. And you see so many more things in your day just because you're seeing more day. Yeah, but like Beverly says, you, you, the rhythm of your day just changes. I mean, so prior to sailing, I barely saw pre-dawn uh, whereas now it's quite common and it's still magical to see the, the, the sunrise. So where's your favourite, well, where, whereabouts did you have your favourite sunrises and sunsets? Well my favourite sunrise um, was actually when we were being <laughs> towed in. That's when we got the line round the prop. Yes. Oh dear, we were being towed in by the RNLI again. again. <laughs> But it was a brilliant sunrise. It was fabulous, I have to say, that was a really good sunrise. Um, it was one that we had uh, near the Isle of Man. I think you might have been asleep for that one. Mm. Uh, going to the Isle of Man from Liverpool just after the refit. That was just lovely. Sea like glassy jelly and just a lovely, lovely light from the sunrise. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. But we've, um, for a sunset, um, we've got a great piece of footage of Beverly um, putting up a cone and um, I have no idea what the prize is going to be but I will try and find you a small prize <laughs> never think our prizes are brilliant but there you go a small prize if you can guess what it is that we've done wrong with our cone <laughs> And that was in the Irish Sea as well, wasn't it? It was in the Irish Sea. We've been, yeah. done a lot around the Irish Sea. But... Yeah, but it's, well, it's a big place. Mm. And then there's stars. Mm. At night, the stars just come out. Now, if you're sailing, to be honest, unless the autopilot is on, the wind is steady, you don't really have a lot of time to look up at the stars. And you might have cockpit lights and sailing lights on. When you're an anchor, um, it's better because you've got the anchor light on at the mast. As long as you look away from the mast, you can see everything. It's amazing what you can see in a really dark location, isn't it? Oh yes, and um, Beverly and I both uh, love uh, looking at the stars, especially Beverly. I mean, say she can rattle off some uh, constellations. I've got Ursa Minor and Ursa Major and uh, Cassiopeia down pat. Right. Um, but which ones have you got? All of them. <laughs> Well, all the northern ones anyway. Certainly everything down to about declination minus 20. Yeah, but you can say some of the names, never mind. What about reticulum? That's where the aliens come from in the X-Files and then they abduct you and put probes into you and things like that. They come from the reticulum galaxy. Fair enough. Champion sailing. Now, it's a it's a term. I don't know whether it's a, a British term or it travels overseas or not. But a champion sail is the sort of day where it's so good, it is such a perfect day for sailing that you quite literally get the champion out, pop the cork off, get out the champion floats, flues around in bikinis, and go yeah. And it's absolutely beautiful. The sea is flat calm. The wind is blowing a nice steady thing. The sails are full, and the boat's just cruising along. We don't have any champion aboard, do we? Uh, we have had champagne aboard then. That's when we got back. I was, I was buying the boat again. We've done that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we have had the champagne on board. So a champagne sail is a really, a really, really, good. really good sail. And we have got one in our mind. We've got a champagne sail, haven't we? And that's our sail to Conway. Oh, yeah. Ellie, what are you doing? She's bouncing back and forth. <laughs> it's because the boat is bouncing. <laughs> But yeah, the champagne sale going over to Conway. Um, it's t-shirts. I know. Can you believe it? We actually were in 
t-shirts, t-shirts. with our life jackets of course oh, it, but it was just one it was warm mm-hmm. two the sea stay it was very very pleasing was very flat, fat you know it was nice and flat you know yeah with full sail up oh yeah full sail up and she just she just cruised along it was lovely the only thing that was lacking was the champagne and the fluted glasses yeah but um but we had coffee we did but the thing that i love about when salty lass is it she just feels like she's in a groove mm. and you know that's what i really like was when she's in that groove and she's just settled the boat is balanced and she's going for it and it's a great although it doesn't really come under champagne sailing though um i think also when it all goes right oh absolutely like there was a time going from millport in in the firth of clyde down to troon and it was a nice sunny day um i think we might have been in t-shirts again actually Mm, i'll I'll I'll, I'll dig out the footage um and we were doing some tacking and we normally try not to jibe the boat if we can avoid we'd rather tack than jibe it's just it's easier to do it's safer safer and easier but this particular day we jibed the boat a few times you know what it went absolutely lovely didn't it it was a cracking jibe and we've actually got it on camera so uh... know, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> and then you took her into train and it was a lovely docking maneuver yep i um you know doing things right because one thing you know we're still learning here and um we still want to improve our sailing do you think that will ever stop no actually applying it and getting it right it just feels so good when you've got it right it does i mean <laughs> there's one particular day sailing from here in carrick up to lauren lock and trust me that particular day we got the tacking we tacked that one to death yeah but you know we tacked quite a bit to be honest <laughs> so uh, why are you laughing it's well we don't mind going slow but i hear about two two and a half hours <laughs> the marine is just over there i can see it <laughs> it must have come nearly oh mile and a half <laughs> i think the only time we didn't tack was going out of the marine and going into lauren lock past the uh, past the ferry terminal yeah, but yeah. We, we sailed the whole thing though, you've got to look at it like that. We sailed it all. Yes, we tacked it all. Because <laughs> the wind was in the wrong direction, but that's normal. Yeah, it was on the nose. Okay, fear. I mean, this is a happy video. We're talking about fear. And that's because sometimes fear turns out to be happiness. It's weird, but it's true. Uh, When I used to fly, one of my instructors said to me, if you only go out in the good days, you'll miss all the best ones. And that's what fear is. Um, There's been a few days we've gone out, and within the first 10 minutes being out, we thought to ourselves, oh my God, what have we done? What have we done? What are we doing out in a day like this? And then sometimes you've got no choice you've got to put up with it uh a good example would be coming out of Carnarvon bar yeah we were gonna we'd got our mind set for going over to um greystones in ireland that's where we were gonna go we're gonna cross the irc again oh <laughs> yeah we're gonna go across the irc again but the thing was um the wind was far too strong the sea, um, state was, sea state was a bit lumpy the sea state was a, a little bit lumpy um and we didn't fancy 80 miles of it did we no so what we decided to do in the end is we went to one of our backup locations but we still had this lumpy sea to face and we were really very comfortable weren't we um no but the fact that um one of the reasons that we chose post incline is that um, rather than um, having the waves you know <clears throat> at 90 degrees to the boat we were um at an angle to the waves plus it was sheltered um, and of course we were going to go to, we were going towards the the land but the thing is that that once we settled into the groove once the decision had been made once we settled into our groove and the boat settled into her groove um we had to more or less hand steer it was too tricky for the autopilot but 
you soon settled into it and looking back on it it is definitely i wouldn't call it a champagne sale because it was no it was definitely not champagne, champagne but it was a really good sale it was a really good sale you know it was uh, we were very reefed on that particular day yeah uh because we had to but we were clipping it we were and um you know we were sort of like doing so many hours on the steering and then we'd swap and then the following um, the following day we had to go from Boston and Klein to Hollyhead yeah again and fear there was a huge amount of fear in that one in that um, before we even left the reason we, we, we made the decision to go to Hollyhead is we'd pulled up the um, anchor uh, Beverly had started the engine no she just turned off the engine no I didn't and Oh yes, yes, beg your pardon. You yes. turned off the engine. Turned off the engine. And we had no electrics. We lost all the electrics on the boat. Everything was gone. So that's I look back over some of the happy times we've had on board, as opposed to what some people might perceive as the bad times. But even the bad times um, in the hard lessons, you look back at them with a sort of whimsical. Mm, and but also, yeah. you've learned. <coughs> you you learn from the hard lessons because. You do, you you know, you learn a lot from... Um, Hard lessons are good for sea stories when you're sitting out with other sailors over a bag of chips or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a story at sea. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. And they're great for that. So, you know, enjoy, enjoy your good days, remember your bad ones and reminisce over them. Yeah, and that's what this video was all about. <laughs> <laughs> Ah oh dear, well I think we'd best check the boat over because um, it's definitely a bit rocky here today. It's definitely getting a bit tasty out here so we'll just go and check a few things. <laughs>